And good afternoon, everybody, and welcome here as we get ready for Restrictor Plate Racing. It's race number nine of season three of the Answer Ray Hershey's Cup Series. As we're getting closer and closer, actually, I look at my schedule. We've got about uh, five more races until we get to our uh, all-star race this season. So, yeah, we're getting close to the midway point of the regular season already. And we are getting ready here for the running of the errands 499. 30 laps of racing here at Talladega Super Speedway. And if the... Uh, Almond Joy Series race was any indication. This race could take a very interesting uh, effect in the fact that we saw the field get rather spread out when it went into a long green flag run, and it wasn't until the very end we saw a caution flag. Drivers having some difficulty getting to pit road. Race ended under caution, and it came down to a fuel strategy race of who could make it and who could not. So that could be a case here today, but we've added an extra 10 laps onto this race as opposed to the Almond Joy race, so that could play even more of a factor into some fuel strategy. But Dallas McIntosh, our winner from Texas, lines up on the pole position alongside of Trent Dunham. Both these drivers come into this race in the top five in the point standings, but only McIntosh of the top two has a win. And I'm sure these drivers are glad to be getting away from dirt and back to good old uh, asphalt racing. Let's go down and get the command to fire them up. Drivers, start your engines! There is the command to fire the engines up, and we'll get ready to go racing here. Although, I got to admit, last week's uh, Mud Summer Classic was really, really fun to watch with the different heat races and the main race and all that. It was, it was really quite interesting. I think it's definitely something that's going to come back in next season of the Hershey's Cup Series. Looks like all 42 drivers are off pit road safely. No mechanical issues. That's always good to see. As you see your starting lineup, you'll notice that one driver is brand new in the starting grade. That's the 77 of DJ Curtis. He will be making his Hershey's Cup Series debut here today at Talladega Super Speedway. And that puts a third Joe Gibbs Racing entry into the field as well, along with uh, former Hershey's Cup Series chaser James Richardson and two-time winning rookie this season, Matt Haas. So we'll see if JGR might be able to pick up their third win of the year, maybe here today at Talladega Super Speedway. Also keep in mind, last week or last year when we were at Talladega Super Speedway, we were here twice in the Hershey's Cup Series and both races were won by the same driver. That was Charles Sanfer. He's in this field today. We'll see if he can go three for three in past Talladega starts turning them into trips to victory lane. Points coming into this race. Cat Tellier is the points leader, our Infineon race winner. Matt Haas is second in the points. Leon Alvarez in third. Trent Dunham outside pole sitter for this race is fourth. Dallas McIntosh fifth. Then it's Cole Baker. Emmanuel Hartnett, last week's winner, jumped up to seventh in points. Then it's Zach Flickinger, Kyle Matthews, and Jake Baskinger. That is your top ten as we get ready to go racing here at Talladega. The flagman is ready. The Aaron's 499 at Talladega is green. Whoa, four wide already into one. Joshua Michaels and Blaine Keyes kicked up to the high side, and they're four wide again. This time, a couple of Toyotas in the middle there. Zach Flickinger, Matt Haas, and I believe that's Anthony McCrory that forced that four wide situation. Looks like they just settled it back out to three wide and Trent Dunham around the outside line takes the lead and they're four wide right behind them for the third position. Tellier, Richardson, Gonzalez and Benjamin Miles who gets shuffled way up to the high side. Oh, easy coming off four there. He just barely clears Levi McIntyre but that is really testy. They are wasting no time here, maybe putting together the first big one of this race weekend as Trent Dunham will lead the first lap. James Richardson crosses the line in second, and they're going to go maybe four wide for third again. Nope, instead it's three wide. Tim Walsh to the bottom of Kyle Matthews and Cole Baker. But they are still four wide back there, about two, maybe three rows deep. And look at James Richardson on the inside line, trying to get the run down the back straightaway to take the race lead away from Trent Dunham. Looks like he'll do it. Trouble! Couple cars down on the apron of the racetrack. They spun. Trying to get back there as quickly as I can. Cycle through this field. 
don't know who exactly it was. Carson Scott, Cody Lamas, Benjamin Miles back here. Sean Galligan was involved. Our Daytona 500 winner. Joseph Srigley as well. And it does bring out the caution. Drag race to the line. Keith Batson will lead us under our first yellow. And I'm sorry it took me so long to get back there. I probably should have cycled from the front to the back rather than from the front through the field to the back. But, boy. Didn't take long for trouble to break out in this one. That was just into the entrance of turn three. I saw a number of drivers actually shoot down towards the apron there. So that puts us under the caution for the first time here today at Talladega in this Hershey's Cup Series race. Like I said, it looked like Benjamin Miles, Carson Scott, Cody Lamas. I don't know if they were involved or not, but they definitely got slowed up. And there you see the skid marks right there going down to the entrance of turn number three. Joseph Srigley and Sean Galligan, those cars have teleported to Pitt Road. Their days may come to an early end here. As Keith Batson leads us under our first caution of the day here in the Aaron's 499. Let's take a look at a replay of what happened. Well, let's see if we can pinpoint where this started. Sean Galligan and Jake Baskinger are shoving each other. Oh, and Baskinger just kind of shoves Galligan up into Anthony McCurry, his teammate. And then... Galligan goes off McCurry's nose, comes back down, and then goes around off the nose of Benjamin Miles, collects Joseph Srigley as well. Whoa, James McLeod just barely going to clear. And then Galligan comes up, oh, and then gets Carson Scott there in the driver's side door. Cody Lamas does get a piece of it as well there in the 48. And then, bam! Galligan right into the Joseph Srigley machine. Pretty heavy impact there for the 44 and the 24. So Cody Lamas, Benjamin Miles getting pieces of that. Anthony McCurry as well. Let's go on board with Sean Galligan and see what exactly he saw. Getting ready to go back racing, and we have three drivers who have retired from the race after that incident. They are Sean Galligan, Cody Lamas, and Carson Scott. So a tough break for all three of those drivers. Sean Galligan, of course, the Daytona 500 winner. Cody Lamas and Carson Scott have had rather struggling starts to the season. We're hoping to maybe use Talladega to springboard and get back into the thing of, thick of things with maybe a trip to victory lane. Doesn't look like that's going to be the case here today. Lights are out top of the pace cars. So will go green. Joseph Srigley lines up on the inside line. He is, I believe, one lap down to the leaders. That is indeed the case. You can see the retirees. And it'll be Keith Batson leading us back to the green with James Richardson, Brandon Gonzalez, Matt Haas, and Trent down the top five. We did have some drivers come to pit road under this caution. Cole Baker and Chris Dodd, a number of others, actually came to pit road. Uh, Carmichael Jazzen, Tim Walsh, Zach Flickinger, uh, Dallas McIntosh, our pole sitter. Benjamin Miles and Anthony McCurry all were on pit road that last under this caution. So they're starting close to the rear of the field. The green flag comes back out. Just to give you an idea, though, of how quickly they can move back to the front, take a look at a couple of drivers that are up here in the top 10 for this restart. There's the 77 of DJ Curtis, and alongside of him, the 60 of William Duncan. Both these drivers started at the very back of the field, and actually not too far behind them. There you see the Panasonic number seven of Jeremy Jones. They all qualified into this race in the non-charter qualifying session, and they had to start at the rear of the field as a result. And they're all up here now, either just inside or just barely outside of the top 10. And that was all in a matter of about three laps or so that they worked their way up from the rear of the field up into the top 10. So. For Chris Dodd and Cole Baker and those that came to pit road under this caution, apparently they realized that was a thing that could happen, that they could pick up a lot of track position. And this could also mean they're thinking this race could settle into a long green flag run. And if that's the case, they could make it about another five extra laps than everybody else when and if those green flag pit stops take place. Right now, top five, Ford, Toyota, Mitsubishi, Toyota, Chevy. They are all single file at the current moment in time. How about Joe Gibbs Racing right now? 
all three of their drivers up in the top six right now. Second, fourth, and sixth, all the even numbers. Brandon Gonzalez thinking about peeking out of line, thinks better of it, tucks back in the line as DJ Curtis tries to latch on to the tail end of this top five. And right there in seventh place, you got Michael Norman making his final season here in the Hershey's Cup Series. And obviously he'd love to be able to win. Michael Norman very well versed when it comes to restrictor plate racing and not a surprise to see him up inside the top 10. William Duncan, Jake Baskinger, they're starting to catch up here along with Dylan Young, Joshua Michaels, Jeremy Jones. Here comes the points leader, Kat Tellier. She's now working her way up here into the uh, top 15. Just moving by Joshua Michaels, and right now I believe would be scored somewhere around the 13th position, Wood Cat. And up at the front, we got some battling going on between some teammates. DJ Curtis to the inside of his rookie teammate Matt Haas. Michael Norman thinking about going three wide, instead settles back to double wide, but he'll use the inside line and try and get around DJ. That would be for position number four. He's going to bring William Duncan, Jake Baskinger, and a whole host of others along with him. Right now, there's actually a breakaway, and that's uh, the top 14 that have broken away into this lead pack. you got Jessica Shelton and Italia Salinas heading that second group back there in 15th, 16th on back. Right now, though, Keith Batson doing a good job of mirror driving either that or these top three seem to be pretty content riding along with each other. Batson, Richardson, and Gonzalez, and William Duncan trying to break up that party. Can't do it. Baskinger jumps to the high side on William Duncan. Now he might get left out to dry, and now Brandon Gonzalez says, okay, time to go, and he's going to have William Duncan help him as now he's going to leave Richardson out to dry. That's the battle for second place. And Richardson's going to fall like a rock because Gonzalez, Duncan, and Norman have a nice draft there on that inside line. And move the 11 on back, and now Gonzalez wants more, thinking about going to the inside of Keith Batson. If he goes, I think Michael Norman might go with him, but the question is, can he get to Keith Batson's left rear? No, he can't. Not this time, anyway. And Batson may have a bit of a reprieve because his teammate Cat Tellier's now moved up to fourth, so maybe the KAV Racing Enterprises cars can get one, too. And maybe the 35 of Tellier, who has a win this season, can play some defense for her teammate Keith Batson and maybe make an opportunity for both of those drivers to make this season's chase for the championship. Michael Norman has now moved into second. He's the one separating the two Ford Fusion teammates. Jeremy Jones now up here in the fourth position. Keep in mind, Jeremy Jones is no stranger to Hershey's Cup Series racing. He is a former winner in this series. And I could be wrong. I could be very wrong, but I think that his win came at this very racetrack. I could be wrong, but I think he's a former winner at Talladega. If we have a caution or something, I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at that to find out because I think that's actually the case. I could be incorrect, but I... I my memory seems to say to me it was Talladega where Jeremy Jones had that victory. And look at this. John Art making it four wide now to three wide, and he will lead that lap. Power move by the Reddit Chevrolet. And now here comes Jake Baskinger down to the inside line for the race lead. He's got Trent Dunham pushing him. Baskinger winning earlier on this season at Bristol dirt. This is not a dirt track, but Baskinger showing he can win at all kinds of racetracks. And look at the gap here. I mean, look how they're racing up here in this lead pack, but look how they're racing back in the second pack, too. It's actually some really good racing there, and we should actually drop back and see it. Tim Walsh leading that group, and they are three wide, about three rows deep there as well. Walsh leading Boyles. Got Sanford, last week's winner. Hartnett in the group there. McIntyre, Shelton, Fitzwater, Alvarez. And then actually you got another group behind them. When you get back from Sekouli and Baker, then you've got Kyle Matthews who apparently has lost the draft along with Dylan Poteet. Poteet and is working with the lap car of Joseph Srigley right here. And then you go a little bit further back, you find Benjamin Miles, Blaine Keys, Chris Dodd. Chris Dodd actually had come to Pitt Road under the last caution trying to do some strategy and looks like he's ending up paying for it here. Anthony McCurry way back as well. But I believe the 61 is slightly damaged, maybe a little bit off the pace. It's going to be getting close for these drivers to come to pit road that didn't come to pit road under our caution flag because 
The fuel window is somewhere between 18 to 20 laps. And uh, these drivers might want a short pit to make sure they can make it the rest of the way. They might come down a little bit earlier, maybe as soon as lap 17, maybe lap 18. William Duncan led that last lap, but now it is Keith Batson back out in front. It looks like they will be encountering very shortly the slower car of Anthony McCrory. The gap from 14th place, that is Brandon Gonzalez, back to 15th place, Tim Walsh leading that second group is about five seconds. I mean, they are battling up here in this lead group, but the... the con to that is that in the second group they're battling just as hard they're still three and four wide back there from 15th on back so it's like two different races going on right now a battle for the win maybe and a battle for 15th i don't know though the field could get bunched up very quickly here if a caution flag comes out in the way they're racing in this lead pack that caution could very well come out at any stage or any moment in time here as I'm looking through this lead pack, there are three former winners in this group. Kat Tellier, Jake Baskinger, and Matt Haas. So the odds are in favor of a different driver going to victory lane. Looks like we may have some pit stops here. Some really early pit stops. John Art's going to come down as early as lap 16. Now, I wagered that if they were going to short pit, they might not pit till lap 17, lap 18. But John Art... Rolling the dice, coming down way early. Maybe not such a bad decision. He's going to have the opportunity of a pit road all to himself. Didn't have to work around anybody coming to pit road, because remember, our caution in the Almond Joy race came in the closing stages with drivers having difficulty coming to pit road under green fly conditions. So that may have been something that uh, John Art strategized about, and we'll see if it works out for him in the long run. One thing he's not going to have in his favor is he won't be coming out with any friends. He won't have any drafting partners when he comes back off pit lane. And now it's feeding time at the zoo. Here we go. Michael Norman is in. James Richardson is in. DJ Curtis, Keith Batson, Dylan Young, and Jeremy Jones. Here comes some more. That was, it looked like, uh, Vernio, McIntyre, Voiles, Sanfer, Alvarez, Hudson, Salinas, and Hartnett. Here comes Poteet, Srigley, and Matthews. Chris Dodd's able to stay out because he pitted under our last caution, so he can make it another maybe five laps over everybody else. John Art just now leaving pit road, and Cat Tellier led the last time by, but now William Duncan inherits the lead, so now who from this group will be coming to pit road this time? It's like William Duncan may be waving his hand saying he's coming to pit road. Jake Baskinger, Brandon Gonzalez, they're coming in. So is Joshua Michaels in the Honda Accord. Jessica Shelton's in this time. So is James McLeod, Zach Fitzwater, and JT Bryant. So the lead now is inherited by Trent Dunham. That Haas Cat Tellier there as well. It's going to get very interesting. The field's definitely going to spread out, and it'll be interesting to see who's going to be the lead pack after this. But so far, we've been able to get through green flag pit stops without incident. Three wide for the lead. Look at this. Dunham, Haas, Cat Tellier, three wide. I don't know if, if all three of them are coming to pit road this time or not, but that was interesting. And Cat Tellier is coming down. So is Haas. So is Dunham. So the top three coming in. McCurry's in this lap. Tim Walsh is coming in along with Dallas McIntosh. Zach Flickinger, Kermica Jazz. And I believe that turns the lead over to rookie, or to uh, not rookie, last year's rookie of the year, I should say, Cole Baker. It does indeed. Now Baker came to pit road under the last caution when Chris Dodd did. So he can make it a couple more laps than everybody else. I believe he's going to be the last of the drivers to pit. Everybody else has been on pit road with maybe the possible exception of the 88 of Chris Dodd. I don't think Chris has come to pit road yet. Unless he came in this lap. Yep, he came in this lap, as did Kermica Jazzen. And those were two drivers that did pit under the caution. Wait, someone just had some damage. Matt Haas has got rear end damage. The 78. I don't know who that came from. 
I don't see anybody behind him with front end damage, but that's not good for him as right now Cole Baker still showing the way, but he's in a hornet's nest. Not sure if he was trying to get to pit road that time or not, but he's boxed in so he can't get to pit lane at the moment. Now he's going to be able to find a way down to the inside line if he decides to pit this lap. Cole Baker getting some valuable bonus points here. Oh boy, look out. Again, looked like he wanted to get to the inside line to be able to come to pit road. Nathan Hudson, though, stuck his nose down there and it's kind of blocking Cole Baker again. Now Baker's got some clean racetrack and I think he's coming to pit road this time. Looks like he's slowing down to make his green flag pit stop. So Baker in, this should turn the lead over, unless he's able to get out ahead. According to what they're saying, it should turn the lead over into this group, James Richardson, Trent Dunham, and company. This would be the battle right now for the race lead, and right now, Joshua Michaels would have it. Matt Haas has that damage as mentioned, rear end damage, but looks like it's not really hurting him as far as speed. He's still up here in this lead pack. Look at, look at this, James Richardson on the high side. Big run into three. Can he make the high side work and take the race lead out of four? He's gonna try and get the side draft off Michaels. Looks like he's making it work. Dylan Young now jumps up there to offer the drafting help. And at the line, looks like Richardson will get it by about maybe half a car length. Cole Baker just now leaving pit road, trying to get up to speed. Here comes the lead pack. Will Baker be able to merge with them? He might actually get out ahead of them. Looks like Cole Baker. Yeah, Baker's gonna actually be coming out still with the race lead. So how about that strategy for the 18? Gonna pay off at least for now, and now he'll lose the lead. Keith Batson will go around and take it, but Cole Baker gonna at least still be with this lead pack. It all goes back to him pitting under the only caution we've had. And now, he's got himself in a chance to maybe pick up his first win of his Hershey's Cup Series career. He'll now go back to the inside line on Keith Batson and take the lead back. Seven laps to go here at Talladega. In this lead pack, you've got Baker, Batson, Art, Matt Haas, Gonzalez, Baskinger, Dylan Young, Joshua Michaels, Jeremy Jones, Cat Tellier, William Duncan, Michael Norman, Trent Dunham, DJ Curtis. That right now are the drivers that are on the lead lap and in this lead pack with a chance of maybe winning this race. That's back to 15th place. Then it's about 4.8 seconds back to 16th, which right now is Nathan Hudson. And that group, well, they're trying to run single file to reel him in, but I don't know if they've got enough time. This may just be a battle for 15th or 16th place amongst these drivers. Now it's about the best they can do. As up front, Cole Baker shows the way. John Art now moves into second. Matt Haas, I'm still shocked that with that rear end damage, he's still up to speed and Drivers are still able to draft with him, but they are. Last time by, the uh, gap between 15th and 16th actually closed up by about little less than two tenths. But I don't think they've got enough time because when they hit the stripe this time, it's five laps to go. Baker the leader, Arndt in second, Young in third. You gotta go all the way back to the battle for sixth, seventh place before you get to a former winner this season, Cat Tellier and Matt Haas. So the odds right now are in favor of another first time winner here in season three. Baker showing the way, Art in second, Richardson in third. Joshua Michaels fourth, Gonzalez in fifth, or make it now Dylan Young in fifth. For two of the race drivers here, the top two, Baker and Art, they're looking for their first wins of their Hershey's Cup Series career. For Richardson, Michaels, and Dylan Young, they're looking for their first wins of the season, but not necessarily first of their careers. As all three of those drivers are former Hershey's Cup Series winners. Richardson winning last season, as did Dylan Young. Joshua Michaels won at Pocono back in season one. And it sounds like we could have some traffic up ahead to deal with, and that is the U.S. Army Chevrolet of Blaine Keys, as well as Benjamin Miles and Joseph Srigley, the lap car just up ahead. They could be factors in the outcome of this race with about four laps to go. 
Anthony McCrory fell a lap down after the cycle of pit stops and Swrigley is also a lap down as right now we've got 37 of our original 42 cars still on the lead lap and they are closing in quickly on the eight car of Blaine Keys. Michaels tried to make something happen there. He's gonna pay for it. Dylan Young out to the inside of him for the fourth position. And he's got drafting help from fellow Fords, Keith Batson and Kat Tellier. And it looks like Cole Baker's gonna go to the outside on Blaine Keys. Arndt tried to make it three wide, couldn't get the run. And Baker using the outside line is gonna be able to open a little bit of distance between himself now and John Arndt. So Baker doing a better job of getting around the slower car than John Arndt and James Richardson did, but that's gonna put a gap between himself and second, which is not exactly a good thing to have at a super speedway. Now gonna catch up here to Joseph Srigley and Benjamin Miles. He'll try and clear these two before he gets down into three. He'll clear Srigley and he will clear Miles. And Srigley down in front of John Arndt now, kind of holding him up. So right now, Cole Baker's got everything going his way here at Talladega. And now, oh, John Arndt's gonna pay the price now. Here comes Richardson to the inside of him for second. And they still haven't gotten around the two lap machines. Someone's gotta get by these guys if they're gonna get up there and challenge Cole Baker. There's two laps to go. Now Srigley put in the middle. Keith Batson now will move into the second position. Baskinger follows him there, but they've still got Benjamin Miles blocking them. And now here comes Keith Batson to the inside of Benjamin Miles. Miles a little bit off the pace after getting damaged from our only caution of the day. And oh boy, Keith Batson's got a big head of steam now and he's got drafting help. Baskinger, Matt Haas, Jeremy Jones all up here now trying to reel in the No Man's Sky Ford of Cole Baker. White flag displayed this time. Can anybody get by the 18? Batson in second, Baskinger third, Haas in fourth. If Batson can get to Cole Baker's back bumper, if he makes a move, will Baskinger go with him? Down the back straightaway. So far, we've had one restrictor plate race, one driver went to victory lane, that was Sean Galligan out of, Cole, of Seth Cole Baker Motorsports. They're trying to go two for two when restrictor plate starts and Batson's not even close. Batson's about two car lengths back. He's gotta get a big run out of four if he's gonna have any shot. He's closing the gap, but it won't close up quick enough. Coming through the tri-oval, Cole Baker for the first time in his Hershey's Cup Series career will see a Hershey's Cup Series checkered flag. He wins at Talladega. And it all goes back to the strategy of pitting under our only caution. He was able to go about three to four laps longer than everybody else. He stayed out. He was able to come down pit road by his lonesome, came out with the lead pack, and then got out in front, worked his way around the slower lap traffic, and was able to hold everyone off. It wasn't even close to being a photo finish potential. Keith Batson could not close the gap between himself and the 18, and Seth Cole Baker Motorsports picks up their second win of the season at a restrictor plate track, and Cole Baker We'll go to victory lane for the first time in his Hershey's Cup Series career. We also had the caution come out there at the closing stages, apparently. Not exactly sure what for, but doesn't play a factor into the outcome of this race regardless. So Cole Baker, will he be in his second full-time season making his first Hershey's Cup Series chase for the championship? We will find out as the season progresses. Keith Batson will finish the day out in second, Baskinger in third, Matt Haas gets fourth, Jeremy Jones, great run there for the goer, go homer in fifth, sixth for John Art, James Richardson gets seventh, Joshua Michaels eighth, ninth for Michael Norman, and the points leader, Cat Tellier, solid outing today in the 10th position. Let's look on down through the remainder of the finishing results, Brandon Gonzalez gets 11th, Dylan Young 12th, Lee Alvarez 13th, Nathan Hudson in 14th, Emmanuel Harton at 15th, James McLeod will get 16, Tripitaki Vernio in 17. So for those two go or go homers, solid top 20 runs for them. Joshua Sakuli gets 18th. Kermica Jazzin will finish the day out in 19th. How about Trent Dunham dropped like a rock all the way back 
to the 20th position, as did DJ Curtis and William Duncan to 21st and 22nd. They were up in that lead pack, and I think they may have lost the draft, fell back into that second group, and then fell to the rear of that second group. So what looked like it was going to be promising runs for all three of those drivers kind of went away there in the closing stages of this one. Shelton finishes 23rd, Flickinger 24th, and completing the top 25 was Levi McIntyre. Dallas McIntyre started on the pole, finishes all the way back in 26th. 27th for Poteet, Matthews 28th. Pit strategy did not work out for Chris Dodd as he finished 29th. Sam for all the way back in 30th place for him. Tim Walsh, JT, Brian Daniel Voyles, Zach Flickens, or Zachary Fitzwater, I should say, and Natalia Salinas all finished on the lead lap. But they finished in 31st back through 35th. We had a total of four drivers finish a lap down. Benjamin Miles, Anthony McCurry, Blaine Keys, and Joseph Swrigley. And then three drivers finished out of the race after our only caution of the day over in turn three. Sean Galligan, Cody Lamas, and Carson Scott. So that is going to do it here from Talladega Super Speedway. Cole Baker fixed up his first win of his Hershey's Cup Series career here today. Definitely, I think, again, going to be a point shaker. We had a number of drivers who came in running well in the point stands who actually finished well in today's race. Tellier, Matt Haas, Leon Alvarez had a decent run. Cole Baker, of course, winning the race. Manuel Hartnett, not a bad run in 15th place. You've got uh, Jake Baskinger having a pretty solid outing. So, you know, the point stands may not change all that much in the top 10, but we could have a couple of faces drop out and a couple of faces pop in heading into next week's race. We'll have to see. But thank you all so much for tuning in to today's race from Talladega Super Speedway. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give us a like, subscribe to be part of the crew today. You're looking now at your official rookie points and your overall points heading into next week. As we will see you guys next time on the NSRA Sports Channel Offline Racing at its best.